Hey there viewers, Eric O from Self Made Auto. We have another repair video today and today we have a 2004 Pontiac Vibe and we're just going to change the transmission fluid and filter. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're just going to begin underneath the car. It's a pretty simple process really. This is the transmission pan right here and this transmission pan drain plug. It's going to take a 14 millimeter. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, crack that loose. Make sure you got a suitable container underneath it to collect all the oil. Drop the plug, let it drain. Now that we've got the fluid draining, we're waiting for that. Go ahead and lay out your gasket. Just kind of get that acclimated. A lot of times these things are really jammed up in the box. And so usually I'll go around and just kind of start working the, working the kinks out of it. Definitely makes it easier to uh, reinstall. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray it down with some high tech spray sealant. It's a um, uh, just like a gasket adhesive. I've used this in a lot of my other videos and uh, so if you've watched any of those you'd be pretty familiar with that. I've gone out, took the gasket over, found out which side is going to contact the pan and that's the side we're going to spray. Usually what I'll do is I'll just put one layer on let it sit for a couple minutes while it's still draining. I'll come over, put another layer on. I might put up to three layers on. It'll give us a really good tack and uh, really help us putting this back together. Now that our drains just slowed down to a steady drip, we're gonna loosen up this plastic shield on the front of this car. This one just has a regular push nail on it. I don't know, I don't think this is factory, so yours might have a different kind of a retainer there. Uh, this car's been whacked in the front end, so. Well, basically, we just want to loosen up this plastic just to gain some access to the transmission pan bolts. Now we're going to use our 10 millimeter. Just go around and remove all the bolts. I probably should have mentioned this earlier. As you're taking the two bolts, or as you're taking all the bolts out, leave two bolts in. Leave one of these front ones in. Just leave it in, you know, leave it in loose. And then leave one of these in, rear ones in loose as you're taking the rest of them off because you'll find it's Murphy's Law, if it's early in the morning and you're taking the transmission pan off and you pull all the bolts out thinking that you can just let it down by hand, you will wear it. And every bit of this will run down the front of your shirt. Leave a couple of them in and it will save you from that humiliation. Just go ahead and hold your pan and take them two bolts out. We're going to take the same 10 millimeter that we we're just using. We're going to remove our strainer. Next thing you're going to want to do is clean out your pan. Just go ahead and remove your old gasket. This one came off pretty good. Might actually have to scrape it off, use a wire brush, get the gasket surface all cleaned up. I'm going to use the parts washer here to get rid of all the old uh, material. And it's not unnormal to see a, a grayish colored clutch material in the bottom. I mean, obviously the clutches are going to wear. You don't ever want to see big chunks or metal slivers, so that, that could definitely uh, be an indicator of some transmission failure. Got two magnets in here. We've got a magnet here, we've got a magnet over here. So you're going to want to go ahead and remove those and clean them good. Um, like I say, I'm using a parts washer. What I would suggest if you don't have one at home, just pick yourself up two or three cans of brake parts cleaner while you're at the parts store. Get this sprayed out, use some old, you know, you can just pick up some real cheap brushes and stuff at the dollar store and, you know, scrub things around and, and get it all sprayed off. for our solvent to dry on the pan there. Let's go ahead and take a rag and clean off the area where your transmission strainer bolts. Make sure that none of the gasket material is stuck to it. Once that's clean, let's go ahead and we'll stick our strainer back up here. Get the bolts started back in it. Now remember, I don't know if you paid attention when you took it out or not, 
the strainer has two different size bolts. The longer single one is the one that goes over here on the driver's side, just goes in the hole by itself. And then you've got two shorter ones also. Don't, don't get those mixed up. Just because we're putting this video on YouTube, we're going to go ahead and torque this down. Torque spec on that is 89 inch pounds. All right, viewers putting your filter on and you don't have a torque wrench, don't get too excited. Just use a little bit of common sense because common sense is a lot like never sees. A little bit of it goes a long ways. Next thing we want to do is just go ahead and make the, uh, make sure the mating surface here where our gasket's going to go. We just want to make sure that's clean. This, this vehicle is actually pretty clean. It's got a 177,000 miles on it. I don't know if the transmission's ever been serviced or not. There was quite a bit of clutch material and stuff in the pan, so I somehow doubt it. But uh, So just go ahead and, and clean that off. If you have to use a scraper, just go ahead and uh, you know scrape your gasket material and stuff off there. And uh, you know just make sure that's good and clean. Now that our pan's good and dried, we sprayed it off with some brake parts cleaner. We want to reinstall our magnets. Now you'll see these little indentations here in the pan. It's just kind of designated areas where they want the magnets. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those back in there. Now we're going to take our gasket that we already sprayed and we're going to stick it to the gas or to the uh, pan here. Now this stuff is super tacky. I don't know. Like I say, you've probably seen it in my other videos if you've watched any of those, but. Boy, what a, what a great product, especially for putting on, you know, pan gaskets and, and other gaskets that come deformed because, uh, boy, these things really lay it down nice. And you just go around, stick it on, and then you can see, you know, it just holds the uh, gasket right in place for you. I love this stuff. Now, I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but in this video, I'll say it again. It's always my habit. Now, you can do this however you like. Um, I only spray the side that actually gets stuck to the pan. And the reason I do that is because when you spray this stuff, if you were to spray it, you know, on the pan side and on the transmission side, this stuff sticks extremely well. So in the event that, you know, you've, you've uh, you know, time for another transmission service, you go to take the pan off, this gasket is going to be stuck to the training. It's going to be stuck to the pan. Granted, it will seal and it will seal wonderfully. It's just, it's a lot easier to remove the pan and get the old gasket material off the pan than it is to, you know, lay on your back underneath the car trying to get it off the transmission. So it's always been, like I say, it's always just been my habit. I just stick it to one side, you know, whether I'm doing a water pump or, um, you know, it's, you know, valve covers or whatever the case may be, you know, anything that uses this gasket, usually I only spray it on one side and it's usually whatever part's going to be easier to change the gasket on in the future. So something to keep in mind, but uh, yeah, don't let me discourage you from spraying both sides. You want to Spray it, spray, you know, spray whatever you like, but uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So now we're ready to put it back on, and you'll probably notice you'll never get the transmission fluid to stop dripping, but uh, don't be too awful worried about that. Usually it's always my habit to just go around, wipe off what I can, but have my pan off repaired and ready to go on. But uh, honestly, if fluid gets on the uh, sealing surface, I've never seen it, uh, you know, make it not seal. So we've got that all ready. You've got your pan ready. Make sure your magnets are in place. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stick our pan up here. We're gonna hold that and uh, get, a, get a bolt ready. Stick a couple bolts in it. Now that you've got a couple bolts started, just go around with the rest of them 
and just get all the rest of them started. But don't tighten anything down yet. You're gonna to wanna to leave them all loose in case you have to jiggle the pan around to line any of them up. Now you've got all your bolts back on. If you have a torque wrench, feel free to go ahead and torque them. Torque specs 48 inch pounds. Otherwise, I like to go through just with a nut driver and just alternate my pattern. Just from one side of the pan to the next and just uh, keep going around until you're pretty sure you've got all the bolts. Once you've done that, just go ahead and double check them by just going all the way around. Now you've gone around the pan a few times and pretty confident that's snug down good. Let's go ahead and reinstall your drain plug. If you uh, want, go ahead and torque that to 13 foot pounds or just use your head a little bit and snug it up. We're all done underneath, so let's come up top and remove our transmission dipstick. We're going to need a funnel that we can fit right down in that pickup tube, or that uh, dipstick tube rather. We'll go ahead and get some transmission fluid. This vehicle uses the Toyota Type T4. We're going to be putting in the Castrol Transmax, uh, which covers this spec, so it's right on the back, so we're going to use that. According to Toyota, on the repair information, this holds 3.2 quarts when you do a spill and fill transmission service, you know, assuming you weren't going to pull the pan. So we're going to dump 3 quarts in it, start it up, run it through the gears, check the fluid, and uh, see where we're at, and we'll adjust it from there. Now that you've put 3 quarts of fluid in it, we're going to go ahead and start it up. We're going to leave the car stationary, just on a level surface, run it through the gears, uh, you know, without moving the car. We're going to end in park, and then leave the car running and come out and check our fluid. vehicle idling in park, come out and check your transmission fluid. You'll see on this one, it's right at the top of the cold mark and that's what I'd expect. Go ahead and take and uh, make any adjustments there that are necessary. Now on this vehicle, we started out with three quarts, I've gone through and I've checked it here. Ended up taking about four quarts total. So. Uh, but I would still recommend just starting out with three because it's all going to depend on how long it drained and uh, you know uh, situations like that so uh, make sure you check it I would say unless you if you haven't driven the vehicle you know somewhere between the cold you know the top of the cold mark and the bottom of the hot mark somewhere's in that area just get it in there and then uh, go ahead and take it for a test drive get it all warmed up bring it back double check your fluid level and uh, you're done well there you have it viewers that's a pretty simple process I think about anybody can do um, don't really have any tips or tricks for you on this one, so hope this video was helpful. Probably a good idea once you get it done and you've adjusted your fluid level and, and uh, you know, run it through the gears each time you add fluid and, and make sure that it's full. Good idea to go ahead and just pop back underneath and make sure, you know, that you don't have any leaks coming from around the pan. And sometimes it's, it's a good idea, but it's not necessary that once the transmission heats up and it cools back down, let's say like the next day, just go back under there with your 10 millimeter and just double check all those transmission bolts. Sometimes that little heat cycle will, will loosen them slightly or that gasket will compress slightly. So it's a good idea to just double check them. And while you're under there, go ahead and put your uh, plastic clip back in that we uh, forgot to put in here just a little bit ago. So just kind of wanted to throw that in there in case somebody on YouTube was there screaming like, you forgot the clip, he's a hack. But I'm gonna go back under, we're gonna put it in, double check it for leaks and uh, take it for a drive and move on to our next job. So thank you for watching and thank you so much for your subscriptions, your likes on Facebooks and all the thumbs up you give us on the videos. Our channel is growing like crazy and it's all because of you, the viewers. So we do thank you for that. And as I like to finish all my videos now, just remember if I can do it, you can do it.